Ho ho ho! It is Merry Christmas 2020 and I have a very appropriate piece of um, headwear on. I want to make a very quick video celebrating the season, so cheers. Drinking some redemption rye. Okay. Let's talk Christmas. I believe it was Christmas um, which I received this book from my father. It's one of the most influential books of my life. Leslie Charteris' The Saint in New York. Originally published in 1935. This is a uh, 1958 edition. It's about this, uh, this incredible character called The Saint, who was in many ways a literary precursor to James Bond. He was this suave, debonair, um, gentleman thief who roamed around the world righting wrongs, doing justice, killing bad guys. Um, and this book, this book was the book that made me say, one day I'm going to go to New York and clean it up. And uh, I arrived in New York. When was it? Four years later? Amazing to think how quickly one can manifest what one wants when you put your mind to it. Anyway, most important book in my life, I think. But it leads on to my favourite book, my most treasured book, and I have many, many treasured books. This is Leslie Charteris's The Last Hero. This is a book originally published in 1930. This is an 18th edition, 18th edition published in uh, 1948, September 1948. Yes, by Hodder and Stockton. Um, and it's funny, one of the things about the Saint books is uh, Leslie Charteris was prolific. He wrote gazillions of them, and then they would publish them under many different names. In fact, I have a 19th edition of the same book by the same publisher, and now it is called The Saint Closes the Case. Um, and why do I have a copy of this book? Because I saw this in a second-hand bookstop, <clears throat> and I was like, oh, I haven't got this one yet, grabbed it, and then it was like, oh, no, wait, I have got this one. I have got the one that was published directly before this one. Anyway. Always nice to have these things. But let me go on about this book. <clears throat> the Saint Closes the Case, or The Last Hero. It's a wonderful book. It's about the saint, Simon Templer, the debonair gentleman thief. But the, this was one of the first books that Leslie Charteris wrote about the saint. And later on in his career as a writer, Leslie Charteris had, uh, had started to create a kind of formula for it. And, I mean, I respect formulas, being a romance author. But he got into the stage where, you know, you'd, you'd have a formula to what a saint story was, and one of the fundamental aspects of that was the fact that the saint was a solitary character, and then you'd insert him and you'd create loads of characters, but you wouldn't have characters who would necessarily continue from book to book. But in the early ones, he had a cast of characters who appeared in book after book, and this book was really quite special because it, it was perhaps the only ensemble piece that Leslie Charteris ever wrote. You had the saint, Simon Templer, this gentleman thief. You also had his friends like Patricia Home, who was, who was kind of on off girlfriend, and you had this character called Norman Kent. Norman Kent, who was who is everything we as the reader were compared to the saint. He was very, very human compared to the saint who was written to be the, the literary superhero. In the, the James Bond movies, the early ones, they used to have this thing where the James Bond would enter the room and spin his hat across the room and it would land on the hat stand in a circle. That was directly taken from the saint. Um, yeah, the saint was larger than life. He was, he was perfect. Uh, and Norman Kent was a very, very human person. And the thing that I loved as like an 18, 19 year old reading a story that really resonated with me was the fact that you had the saint, the Robin Hood of modern crime, this incredible figure, and he had his pseudo girlfriend Patricia Home who adored him and, you know, in some stories they'd be together, in some stories he'd be off with somebody else. Uh, the, I, it, was, it was difficult to explain their relationship, whereas Norman Kent loved her. Norman Kent was in love with Patricia Home even though she was in love with Simon Templer, and even though Simon Templer was in love with something else. And that resonated with me. Um, and this is a wonderful book. 
It's a wonderful adventure story. And it's very much rooted in its time. 1930. The shadow of World War I. Well, it was just the Great War in those days. It was very heavy in Europe. This was the era of the Lost Generation. It's the era when everyone knew that at any moment something could immerse Europe in war once again. And this story starts with the same and Patricia stumbling across some some terrible, horrifying weapon that could kill more than the millions they'd seen slaughtered in the trenches of the Great War. And the thing was, when you read this book, if you were of that age, you would have lost your father or your brother or your uncle to the Great War. This was raw in your in your mind. You knew how dangerous everything was. And you were terrified of a great weapon like that. And the saint, being the noble uh, thief that he was, didn't want to trust governments to look after this weapon and to make sure it didn't fall into the wrong hands. And so he and his friends went on this incredible mission to, to make sure it didn't. And it is an incredible book. It's an incredible adventure story. But, in the very end, our hero Norman Kent, and I don't know if anyone will ever read this, so I don't know if it's, it's worth doing spoiler things, makes a great sacrifice. And one of the great lines in this book that has struck with me is perhaps one of the greatest pieces of wisdom anyone has ever given me, is nothing is won without sacrifice. Anything that you win, you have to lose something to acquire. It's like if you if you like Marvel movies, that whole thing with Soulstone, where you have to, to lose something you love or someone you love to get the Soulstone. It's the same thing in life. And it's a line from this book, nothing is won without sacrifice. And Norman Kent makes a great sacrifice. And the thing I think that moved me so much about it was the fact that Norman Kent was the human character in this book. He was the one that you could relate to. He was he was the only one who could die because the saint was larger than life. And the last paragraph of this book, I memorised um, and used to like recite like all the stupid Shakespeare stuff I memorised from school. So I'm going to read it to you. Why not? Merry Christmas. Because <clears throat> this meant something to me when I read it. And maybe, I don't know, nobody watches these videos, maybe it'll mean something to you. Norman Kent wasn't afraid. He was smiling. It was a strange way to come to the end of everything, like that in that quiet bungalow by the peaceful Thames, with the first mists of the evening coming up from the river like tired clouds drifted down from heaven, and the light softening over the cool, quiet garden. That place had seen so much of their enjoyment, so much comradeship and careless laughter. They had been lovely and pleasant in their lives. He wished his leg wasn't giving him such help. That would soon be over. And there must be many worse ways of saying farewell to so full a life. It was something to have heard the sound of the trumpet, and the game would go on. It seemed as if the shadows the peaceful evening outside were the foreshadowings of a great peace all over the world. And I think it's beautiful. It wasn't the foreshadowings of peace. This book was written in 1930. In 1933, Adolf Hitler rose to power. In 1939, uh, Europe was already aflame, and Britain got thrown into World War II. Americans joined in 1941. The Great Peace would be many decades to come, but the hope for it was in there and the vision of it was in there and the knowledge that it would take great sacrifice to achieve that was in there as well it's a book that's always moved me and has always been really really important to me and the problem with the authors like leslie charteris is that they're populist and they've written gazillions of books and if you read the same stories generally they're all pretty amazing but a book like this is like a 
truly amazing piece of literature. It's like James Bond, people always poop on the James Bond books, you know, as, as like the uh, misanthropic uh, spy stuff, except they, they have occasional gems of amazingness in them. This book, to me, is such an important flagstone in my understanding of history and the world and human nature and things like that. And so, um, it's a pity that people overlook stuff that is populist and don't realise that sometimes it contains great truth and great wisdom in it. Anyway, Merry Christmas everybody. Grab a book, any book, read it, enjoy it, and let's make something incredible out of 2021. Cheers.